a lot of companies and a lot of entrepreneurs, they say, my, my goal is to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Yes. Or the New York Times. And I always tell I know them, you hear that a lot. And I, <laughs> and I, and I, and I uh, or Newsweek or yeah. whatever. And I, and I say, you know what? You don't want to be on the front page of the Wall Street Journal because if you are at the stage that you're in right now, that means that you had a major crisis. Yeah. There's something bad happening. That's yeah. the only reason that a company comes out of nowhere and lands on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. Yeah. The way it works 99 times out of 100 is there's building blocks. First, you get known in your local papers or in your trades, and then you move up to sort of third, second tier. And then after a while, you've kind of built this uh, archipelago of different pieces that, that, are, that, that are maybe going to attract the interest of a major a writer from the New York Times or from you know, a, a Business Week, a Bloomberg Business Week, or whatever, whatever happens to be your, your objective. Yeah. The other thing, too, also is um, you want to make sure that you're ready for prime time. You know, mm -hmm. so often companies, they, you know, they're, they're still writing their basically their business plan and they're already wanting to talk about, uh, you know, talk about that to the world. And, and there's really there's no proof points there. And, and savvy journalists, savvy tech journalists, savvy finance journalists, they will poke holes into that right away. And that could, that's the that's the worst thing possible. You know, I'll tell you a story. A good friend of mine, mm -hmm. there's a woman and she's the editor in chief. I'm, I don't think she would mind me saying her by name. Her name is Arundhati Parmar and she's the editor in chief of Med City News. And she did me the biggest favor ever. And she didn't, not, not personally, she was had no idea that I was going to see this, but someone sent her, and I won't name the, the company, uh, some company sent her a press release and the company was celebrating its one year anniversary after raising a record, I don't know, $500 million Series C investment round. Mm -hmm. And that press release was about celebrating one year anniversary. Of course, that's not news. Yeah. What did you? Who did you hire? What did you do with that five hundred million? How did you invest? Did you do any M M and A? Did you do any R and D? What, what did you do with that five? That would be news. But yeah. they were just saying we're celebrating one year since we raised a record five hundred yeah. million. And she and, and ninety nine journalists out of hundred are going to say, okay, that's not news. Trash. What she did is was such a great thing. She put it on LinkedIn and she said, "This is a company that has no news to report, and this is a disgrace." And, and wow. she basically show, showed that the whole idea of throwing spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks is a bad PR strategy. And so every time I have a chance to talk to someone about, well, let's just let's just let's just put out a press release, see what happens. I'm yeah. like, look at this example. Yeah. Look at my friend Arundate. Mm -hmm. I remember that because you shared that and remember thinking that is helpful to show this is how that's perceived on the other end, because oftentimes we are asked by clients, please help us make this into news. And some things can be made into news and other things can't. And um, it can be helpful to have a window into how is that received on the other end. You have also been willing to share that you get lots of pitches as well. Mm -hmm. And again, um, in the world of not every pitch is really strong. Do you have any tips for companies out there who are trying to think about how they position something to media um, about what not to do? <laughs> so I can tie this very closely, I think, to this narrative or this thesis that we're developing here in this conversation about being understood. Yes. And that is, if you are a company and you're trying to get the attention of a journalist, Think about what is that journalist interested in writing about? You have some random, I have this person, and I won't say his name. In fact, I don't even know his name, but he, he pings me literally every day that he does um, drone advertising in the sky. And I'm thinking, what what is it about me that makes <laughs> yeah. him think that I care about drone <laughs> advertising in the sky? I, I haven't really written about drones. I don't really write about advertising. Mm -hmm. I don't write about aviation. I, what is it? What, what does he think that that's, you know, and so... The question is, what do journalists want to talk about? And so you have to fit whatever it is that you're doing into their narrative. That's the most mm -hmm. that's that's the most effective thing you can do. But the other thing you can do is almost, you know, and I don't mean to say this lightly, but, you know, you almost want to write the article for them. Like, and I don't mean they're, they're obviously going to put their own premature on it. They're going to change stuff. They're going to you know do their editing. But to the extent you can make their job easier. That's really key because newsrooms, as you guys know, have been shrunk. Mm -hmm. TV newsrooms, print newsrooms. You know, I, I know people in New York that are, you know, having to write, you know, eight, between eight and 10, 200 to 400 word articles per day. It's a lot. And Just if someone has to, has, has to write, you know, 
400 times eight, that's 3,200 words, but also eight ideas, eight yeah. very different ideas, and then make sure they're edited and da, 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 If you're under that type of pressure, you don't have time to be like strategic and thinking, let's go have yeah. coffee. And how many times are, are some, is someone you know, is hitting me up saying, let's go have coffee. I, mean, I don't have time to have coffee. Right, you know? right. Tell me what's your idea. Give me your pitch. And if I like it, then you're going to send me something more extensive. And so yeah. I think that a lot of times companies don't understand that. They think that these journalists, it's, back, it's like the, the Mad Men era that was yeah. advertising, but you know, mm-hmm. they're having like three martini lines and they got plenty of time and they're working on one story a month. That's not the way it works anymore. Yeah. Newsrooms are completely different. So you need to get into that sort of mode of operating if you want to attract the attention of, of a journalist and then also make it personalize it. So, you know, I know you wrote about X, yeah. you know, last week. Would you be interested in following up on, you know, X, Y, which is a little bit different, but sort of similar and related? And maybe the person's like, no, I, I wrote on there. I'm not going to write on something else. Okay, well, what, what are you writing on now? What, yeah. what, are, what types of stories are you looking for? I love it when someone says, hey, what, how can I help you? you know, and a PR person will come up to me and they'll say, I have 15 clients. What are you working on? Maybe one of them can fit into what you're doing. And I'm like, oh, I'm actually doing a story. That's, oh, I have this client. With, you know, they, they kind of put the pieces together. And that's Making something that I stats. think that a really good PR person does. And a really good communicator behind that PR, the PR person would figure out, okay, I know that that journalist is going to write about this. How do I, you know, make that linkage between the media opportunity and the core messaging of that client that, that meets that client's sort of underlying business needs? 